Welcome to Watch Mojo UK, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Great British Bake Off. Where are they now? I haven't grown up around animals or anything, and I'm scared of a lot of animals, really. <laughs> Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're going to be looking at winners and other notable Bake Off contestants and finding out what they've been up to since appearing on the show. Love Bake Off and want to share a fun fact about a contestant? Don't be shy, let us know in those comments below. Number 10. Ed Kimber I can't have imagined this a year ago, so it's just beyond amazing, really. The first Bake Off winner all the way back in 2010. Kimber was a debt collector for Yorkshire Bank prior to appearing on the show. But the huge success of the new show meant that he could quit his job to focus on his true passion, food. Since then, his career has gone from strength to strength. He has published six cookbooks, runs the popular The Boy Who Bakes YouTube channel, and worked in Raymond Blanc's highly prestigious Le Manoir Restaurants as a pastry chef. He also had a spell as the resident baker on ITV's The Alan Titchmarsh Show. Yet once you've made the dough, you add just a small amount of chocolate. No bad going at all for the boy from Bradford. Number 9. Joe Wheatley Joe! <laughs> Wheatley was the first contestant to win the expanded 12 contestant version of the show in 2011. The mother of three stormed to victory with a series of outstanding culinary creations. And since being crowned the victor, she has become a regular in the British media. She's written recipes for The Mirror and the BBC Food Guide, among many others, as well as publishing several cookbooks. You'll often see her baking on This Morning, The One Show, or Saturday Kitchen too. And that's how lift, and they will go into the oven, but bake them really low and slow, and that will keep them this lovely white colour. And perhaps most impressively, she's converted her house into a highly rated cooking school. She now lives in Lisbon, Portugal, where we're sure she's still baking to her heart's content. Number 8. John Waite I think I found my confidence again. If I let last week fester away inside of me, then I'm going to fail, but I just need to get over it, forget about it, and carry on. The show's third winner, John Waite, is one of the more prominent former contestants on our screens right now. He's made waves as part of the first ever male same sex couple on BBC's Strictly Come Dancing, wowing audience with his breathtaking routines with partner Johannes Radaby. <laughs> In addition, he's appeared as the resident baker on ITV's Lorraine and is a regular on Channel 4's Steph's Packed Lunch. He also co-presented two series of Chopping Block with Rosemary Schrager and opened a cooking school on his family's Lancashire farm in 2015. And with cookbooks galore to his name, Wait is a name that won't be disappearing from the public eye anytime soon. Number 7. Ruby Tando Let's have a look inside. Oh, it's going to be so bad. Oh, really? No. 2013 runner-up Ruby has had a very different post-Bake Off experience to most former contestants. Like many others, she's published cookbooks, four to date to be precise, and she landed a role as a food columnist with The Guardian. But she quit after a few years, citing the elitism of the food industry. And perhaps most strikingly, she launched a scathing public attack on Judge Paul Hollywood on Twitter. When Hollywood chose to follow the show to Channel 4, unlike fellow judge Mary Berry, Tando called him, among other things, a peacocking man-child. She also claims the sound of the show's theme tune makes her sick and can't watch any more. It's a shame it ended so sourly. Number 6. Andrew Smith I think you've done well, Andrew. Okay, thank you. Thank you. One of the show's brainiest ever contestants, Smith worked as an aerospace engineer at Rolls-Royce before appearing on the show. Usually, we see finalists quit their job at the conclusion of the series to take up baking full-time, but Smith went straight back to Rolls-Royce to continue his work designing jet engines. His newfound fame certainly increased the profile of his work, and in 2016, he was entrusted with making an edible jet engine for Prince William himself. Nowadays, he works on his engineering four days a week while baking on the side. 
and he's now a judge on Netflix's Baking Impossible show. How you've managed to get that cake so moist is amazing. Life is still very busy for this brain box. Number five, Liam Charles. What's your team? My United. It's such a shame you have to leave this week. <laughs> After finishing in fifth place in 2017, cheeky Liam has stuck around in the Bake Off universe. A year later, he snagged the job of co-hosting Bake Off the Professionals with comedian Tom Allen, which he still holds today. He also presented his own Liam Bake series on Channel 4 in 2018, and is now a judge on Junior Bake Off alongside Prue. Turmeric. How much you want in there? A teaspoon. A little sprinkle. But Charles also appeared on 8 out of 10 Cats as a panelist and has published two cookbooks, Cheeky Treats, 70 Brilliant Bakes and Cakes, and Second Helpings. Like many other contestants, he contributes to The Guardian regularly too. Coming in fifth really does work for some. <laughs> yeah. Number four, Nancy Bitwhistle. What did the male judge that... say? You know when I said I'm say 70. The male judge? Yes. As winner of Series 5, Fancy Nancy has made quite a name for herself post Bake Off. She's taught baking in schools and regularly posts cooking tips and advice on her popular YouTube channel. She's also a regular on the After Dinner Speaking Circuit and published her first cookbook, Sizzle and Drizzle, in 2019 whilst writing recipes in the Telegraph. Nancy was asked to bake a cake for the 30th anniversary of EastEnders and has recently published his second book, Clean and Green, 101 Hints and Tips for a More Eco-Friendly Home. She may not be the most famous of winners, but she certainly carved out a very successful niche for herself. I've got three eggs beaten up there in a jug. I've got plain flour. Number three, Rahul Mandal. Rahul! <laughs> Another incredibly brainy contestant, Raul won Bake Off in 2018, but before appearing on the show, he worked at the Nuclear Advanced Manufacturing Research Center at the University of Sheffield. And after leaving the show with the cake stand trophy to his name, he returned to his nuclear roots just as before. He still bakes regularly at home and shares his creations with his loyal Instagram fan base. He also returned to the show for a New Year's special in 2021, beating out Burt Whistle, among others, to claim a second victory. It seems crazy that this talented double winner isn't pursuing baking at a professional level, but we're sure the University of Sheffield would have something to say about that. It's, it's nothing better than making a cake for your mum and getting appreciated. Number two, Kim Joy Hewlett. So I'm doing like the lost city of Atlantis. Atlantis because I just like fantasy and I feel like I live in a fantasy world. Like many Bake Off finalists, the charismatic Kim Joy has managed to make a real success out of baking after featuring on the show. A psychological well-being practitioner before appearing on the show's ninth series, Kim Joy has since gone on to release multiple cookbooks, including Baking with Kim Joy and Christmas with Kim Joy, as well as regularly uploading recipes to her YouTube channel. Hello everyone, so today I'm decorating cute and fluffy Tim's biscuits. She's since expressed a desire to work in what she calls baking therapy, and if art therapy can be a thing, why can't this? We can think a few better suited for the role. Certainly one of the more unique and quirky contestants, it's been great to see her be successful. Number one, Nadia Hussein. Nadia! Since winning in 2015, Nadia has become one of the most recognizable and ever-present faces in the British media. Her list of achievements is so long that it's a struggle to list them all here. She's written seven cookbooks, presented numerous TV shows, including Nadia's British Food Adventure and Nadia Bakes, and even had novels published. She's guested on countless other TV shows too, and was named in both Debrett's 500 Most Influential People in the UK list and BBC News's 100 Women list. Perhaps most importantly though, she was cited as having, quote, done more for British Muslim relations than 10 years of government policy in a government report on community cohesion. Nadia, we salute you. 
Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from WatchMojo UK and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.